we are back with the fifth and final segments of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fifth segment, we are going to talk about the possibility of Russell Westbrook, the fly, joining the Denver Nuggets. And let me go ahead and, you know, elaborate exactly what I mean about joining. So the Clippers and Russell Westbrook, well, particularly Russell Westbrook, Russell Westbrook opted to pick the his player option up and continue playing for the Clippers on his player option deal. However, there have been recent reports. This report came out yesterday that the Denver Nuggets, well, particularly Nikola Jokic, actually, expressed interest in bringing Russell Westbrook onto the team. And, like, this is Jokic. Like, Jokic wants the Denver Nuggets to try and bring Russ. That is the deal. And it seems that the wanting to play with each other is mutual because, you know, Russell Westbrook has also expressed interest in playing with the Denver Nuggets. So according to this article right here, it was reported several places on Sunday that the LA Clippers are looking to trade Russell Westbrook and the Denver Nuggets are among the teams interested in acquiring him. Westbrook recently opted into his final year of his contract, but sources have indicated he did so knowing a trade was likely. In an additional report on the potential Westbrook to Denver move, Harrison Wind of DNVR reported that 2023 Finals MVP Jokic has been pushing behind the scenes to get Westbrook on the Nuggets. Now, let me just go ahead and look at the quote. Nikola Jokic has actually been pushing behind the scenes to get Westbrook to Denver. Wins said, I've been told that Nikola wants Westbrook in Denver. He wants to play with him. It's not the first time he has wanted to play with him. So that's honestly, that's got to be really cool. Like for Russ, the fact that someone as good as Jokic wants him on his team. Because quite frankly, if I was Jokic, I wouldn't want him on my team. Now, I'm very, very curious to see how this would work with you know, the Denver Nuggets and how they would play, how Jokic would play with Russell Westbrook because Russ is incredibly ball dominant, but so is Jokic. And quite frankly, you want Jokic to have the ball 24-7. So I don't know where that leaves room for Russ, but at the same time, you know, Jamal Murray, he's also pretty dominant with the ball and they seem to be working out just fine. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes. And quite frankly, I think that Russ's shooting is going to really hinder this team because um, Jokic is going to get double teamed a lot. If he's put in the same rotation as Russell Westbrook, excuse me, he is going to get double teamed a lot because Russell Westbrook, quite frankly, can't shoot. Now, granted, Jokic, you know, with Aaron Gordon, Aaron Gordon has been getting double teamed or, you know, Jokic gets double team while Aaron Gordon is on the floor and he still figures out how to get Aaron Gordon involved. So maybe this is sort of like something just dropped. I apologize. But maybe this is something that um, Jokic already has planned out and he's already going to make the adjustments, make all the offensive things that he needs to do on the offense and get Westbrook involved. It's going to be very interesting to see how this team works. But quite frankly, like I said before, I'm not a big fan of Russell Westbrook. Despite the fact that he's most likely going to come off the bench, I am not a big fan of him. This is going to be the sixth and like the seventh team that Russ is going to be a part of in the last few years. And it's like he hops from team to team to team. And this is going to be the this is going to be another team that he's going to be a part of, but we'll see if it's really going to be for one year or if it's going to be for the tenure of his career. Sources have confirmed that Jokic wants Westbrook in Denver, and he is not the only Nuggets veteran who has been pushing for a deal to get done. The Clippers are currently exploring all possible trades involving Westbrook, but even if he is not traded directly to the Nuggets, a team acquiring him could reach a buyout agreement that allows him to become a free agent and sign in Denver. So those are the possibilities of Russell Westbrook and the season. Several signs point to the 2023 champions being Westbrook's next team. And according to this article, they believe the fit makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. And I don't really see how 
the this fit is going to be good for the team. I'm sorry to say, but I genuinely don't see how this fit is going to be good for the Denver Nuggets. Now, obviously, they don't the Denver Nuggets, they do not have Caldwell Pope anymore and the shooting is going to be it's obviously, you know, Caldwell Pope and his shooting was incredibly valuable, especially like with Jokic and all the playmakers that they have on the team being able to pass the ball like that. But quite frankly, I'm not entirely, I really don't know how this deal is going to work. I'm not a big fan of Russ, as I've said several times. And I think his play style and his inefficient nature and, you know, just the fact that he turns the ball over so many times, I think it's just going to eventually hurt this team. Now, let's see. I'm looking at another report saying, Nikola, nobody knows this better than superstar center Jokic, who is campaigning for Russell Westbrook trade behind the scenes via Harrison Wynn, as you know, as I said before, and as I said before, you know, as the, as the article is saying, Westbrook opted into his $4 million player option with the Lake, with the, uh, the Clippers, excuse me, but the club is still looking to move him via Shams, so this is just, you know, another report coming in from Shams, and the Clippers are actively working on trades to move on from Russell Westbrook, sources say, according to him, Westbrook now, um, this is actually interesting. Westbrook would greatly improve the Nuggets' second unit. Now, this is sort of like what the the thought process is for acquiring Russ, because since he's coming off the bench, there is belief that he is going to improve the second unit coming off the bench. After losing both Bruce Brown and KCP in the last couple of years, it's time for Denver to add another significant bench piece. Christian Braun, Reggie Jackson, and Justin Holiday aren't enough to keep up in with the West's upper echelon, as the trio averaged just 11.5 points per game combined last season. Meanwhile, Westbrook alone averaged 11 points on 45% shooting with 5 rebounds and 4.5 assists across 22 minutes per game last season. The 35-year-old still has enough gas in the tank to be a reliable six-man. This is, you know, according to the article. Now, in my personal opinion... Uh, again, Russ does a lot more harm than good to your team. And in the fourth quarter of games, if he is not on the bench, you are losing. I'm sorry to say it, but if you are not on, if he's not on the bench in the fourth quarter, then there's a huge chance that your team loses because Russ turns the ball over like a machine in the fourth quarter. It never fails. And on top of that, he always takes a horrible shot in the fourth quarter, and you're lucky if it goes in. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really not a big fan of Russell Westbrook. Furthermore, the Nuggets have the assets to pull off a potential deal. The organization has first-round picks in 2026, 2028, 2030, 2031, as well as second-rounders in 2025, 2026, 2029, 2030, and 2031. Giving up at least one first-rounder and a bench player should be enough value to, fesh, to, to get Russell Westbrook, according to this article. As for the nine-time All-Stars on-court fit, expect him to be Jamal Murray's backup if he does land in the city. Westbrook's rim-attacking style off the bench would provide a balance with Murray and Jokic's two-man game, especially considering his intensity and high motor. That's really, that's always the praise like with Russ. He, like, he always brings the intensity, he always has a high motor, he always plays at 100%, but no one brings up the fact that he can't shoot! Like, I don't understand, and my phone's ringing for some reason, but no one brings up the fact that he just can't shoot, and teams practically beg him to shoot because he can't, and since he's Russ, you know, since he's Russ, like, he's going to shoot the ball, and he's going to hit the top of the backboard, or he's going to hit the side of the backboard, or this, that, and the other, like, I'm sorry, that happens way too many times than it needs to, and quite frankly, I blame it on him lifting too many weights and trying to get the rebounds. Let me break it down real quick. So, the reason why a lot of centers can't shoot, like, back in the day, wasn't because they were tall, as a lot of people would think. It was because they lift too much. If you lift too much, the ball becomes way too light. If the ball becomes way too light, you tend to overshoot, you tend to undershoot. It is why Shaq couldn't shoot. It is why a lot of these players... A lot of these big centers that lift a lot can't really shoot because the ball is too light for them. And so if you don't lift that much, right, you're going to have your you're gonna have a better touch with the ball and you're going to be able to shoot it. 
And this is why Russell Westbrook's shooting declined since his MVP years. So, so when he was the MVP, his and even before he was the MVP, his mid-range jump shot was straight butter. It was butter. It went in 9 out of 10 times. And once he was averaging a triple-double, he started lifting weights so that way he can, you know, get the rebounds a little bit better because he wants to average a triple-double. However, this came at a price. Because he was lifting so many weights, he got more buff. Because he got more buff, his shooting touch fell off. And this is why his free throw shooting percentage kept declining every single year. This is why his mid-range shooting percentage kept declining every single year. This is exactly why Russ can't shoot anymore because he is so he was so focused on bulking up and getting the rebounds that it just completely it just completely killed his shooting and that is a big reason why I don't agree with like why I don't like Russ one of the big reasons why I don't like Russ's play style because why if you're a point guard are you bothering to lift weights and ruin your shooting percentage just to get a couple of rebounds? Why? And this and people try to like, you know, say that oh, Russ he wants to win. He always wants to win. No, if he really wanted to win, he wouldn't buff up so he can grab rebounds. It is that simple. He would have stick he would have stuck with his shooting because that is what made him so lethal and that is what made him such a great scorer. And, like, you know, he was a great playmaker as well and everything else. But part of what made him a great scorer was his mid-range jump shot and the fact that he can pull up on a dime and it scared people in a pick and roll. Like, that is legitimately what he was. And it just, he killed it. I'm sorry, he killed his mid-range. And that is one of the biggest reasons why I am not a big fan of him. Because I liked him when he was on, when he was the MVP. I thought he was phenomenal. But he just kept getting worse and worse. And he wasn't improving his game whatsoever. Every single year that I watched him, it was like the same Russ over and over and over and over again. And he never tried to improve. And because of that, I just couldn't get, I just couldn't back a player that just wouldn't improve simply because he wanted to get triple doubles. But that's just me. So that is all I have for you in this final segment. And with that, that is the end of the podcast for today. So thank you so much for tuning in to the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us. So please remember to subscribe to the show. Leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. As usual, please remember to use the link in the description to get your comments recognized or the link displayed below the ticker on every show segment. That is gsmcpodcast.net. Really helps the show. Makes it much more interactive between myself and you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host, Nelson. And as always, take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow. Feel like it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. Nice. I don't wanna go.